Good evening. The opinions and statements voiced by our guests do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this network. Enjoy the shows. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. Now, historic films made in the spring of 1948 and just released show Enoetok preparing for heavily guarded and still largely secret tests of new atomic weapons. The test's purpose is to measure atomic effects on thousands of different materials, 30,000 tons of them, not, as at Bikini, to prove military effectiveness. San Francisco police say that nine persons have been arrested in a narcotics raid on the headquarters of the Grateful Dead, a widely popular singing group. Two members of the group, Rod McKernan and Robert Weir, and their business manager, Danny Rifkin, have been booked on suspicion of possessing narcotics. Three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. Here we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Well, strange lights are causing a viral buzz on YouTube. Could we have caught extraterrestrial activity on a recent newscast? Brandon Arroyo investigates. As the newscast ended, the controversy began back on September 26th. What is that light shining in the back of the dark night sky? With coverage reaching all the way back to 1948, for over 70 years, Fate magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Now, Fate Magazine Radio is carrying on that tradition of setting the standard in Paranormal Talk Radio as we report and discuss some of the most mysterious and perplexing phenomena imaginable in this strange world of ours. Now, here is your host of Fate Magazine Radio, Kat Hobson. Good evening. Welcome to WBHM Digital Broadcasting. We are out of Birmingham, Alabama. I am so glad that you are here because tonight you are in for a fantastic Fate Magazine radio show. I am Kat Hobson. I'm your host. I am so pleased to tell you about our guest tonight. And I am looking forward to this show. I met Carl through UFO Twitter. Believe it or not, I just became fascinated with the subject. It's always been something that I felt I was interactive with since I was in like the seventh, sixth or seventh grade. And when I started going on and looking at things, I was actually looking for quantum physicists because I had questions. So I found Deep Prasad there and I He was interacting with Carl and then other people, Chase Klotsky, other people that I knew were also interacting. And I thought, well, I found home. (laughs) This is fantastic. But um, so we are going to be covering Carl's experiences. He has had anomalous activities happening to him for basically his whole life. He was um, experiencing paranormal spirits, what he believes were demonic interactions also. And he lived as an adult in an active house 
but he is also very active with UFO Twitter because he kind of fell down that rabbit hole, I guess, in 2009. We're going to talk about that. And I'm I'm really excited. Before we get started, I just wanted to let y'all know that, you know, I know that the the riots and fires and mudslides and everything are still going on today. And if you can just give positive energy towards all of these things, I have spoken with one of my friends who was being evacuated. She said that all of the major fires are contained. So that's a positive. That's a fantastic positive. Let's just keep our thoughts and and prayers and intentions flowing towards all of those people who are are trying to survive. And with that being said, I am going to introduce you to Carl Anderson. Hey, Carl. Hi, Kat. Thanks for having me on. Well, thanks for being here. You know, I I went and sought you out. (laughs) And you were so nice to say yes. Because (laughs) I had... I had, I guess, maybe like for two years now, maybe a little more, been following people that know a lot more than I do on on the current UFO phenomenon, and that would be on the ground, right? That would be the, the TTSA and the DOD and um, all these things that are not supposed to be out, but appear to be, which makes me think, well, that's just a nice little dribble. So, you know, are they serious or are they just, you know, distracting the madding crowd, right? So, um, and you agreed. <laughs> you agreed yeah. to come on. Thank you. <laughs> no so, problem. Because, My pleasure. you know, I, I love this topic and I, I really enjoy discussing it with you and everyone else too. As I said, there's so many people who know so much more than I do. And, you know, you do a very good job of kind of mediating. And even if you don't, I think, really mean to be, you kind of keep everything moving forward when it starts to kind of like get the, you know, the strands popping out. So, yeah, um, yep. It's a real polarizing topic, that's for sure. It really uh, is. Um, you're dealing with people's perspectives, different perspectives, backgrounds, whatnot. And, uh, you know, it can make people, you know, you actually start getting really irate with each other. And uh, when that happens, it's kind of a loss for everybody because it shuts the conversation down. Mm-hmm. And I really try. I just about do anything I can to get two sides. You know, they can have polar opposite opinions, but. I want them, like if two people go in with a conversation and they have uh, two so, so different opinions, if they can both walk away without fighting, both will take away something. And when they join into another conversation, they'll bring that to that conversation. But when you get conflict and, well, I'm right and uh, that's it, you know, like this is this is how it is. It's not. Like with UFOs, it's our technology. It's not something alien. Or it's alien. It's got to be that. And when you do that, you dismiss everything else. And uh, I think the open mind is the biggest tool you can use in this this whole quest. I would agree with that. And, you know, we're when we're in that genre, we are dealing with very educated individuals in large part. You also have oh. people who probably aren't aware of times they've been wrong. (laughs) You know, I mean, there's a lot of, um, and very well-deserved, um, self-confidence in the, in this group of individuals. So it is hard because there is to a degree, you can't have achieved the level of education and work history and basic knowledge that these people have and not be fairly confident in your own opinions. Absolutely. Um, you've got great people. Like you mentioned, uh, deep Prasad, mm-hmm. he's a, he's some guy like, and he's so intelligent. I mean, I don't even, 
I'm just a, to me, I'm just consider myself a Twitter guy and he's like, uh, he knows about, you know, quantum computing and things like that. And he's got su- such a great insight and a fantastic attitude and a I great sen- attitude. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you know, you got the, you know, the real heavy hitters like Richard Dolan and, uh, he's done so, so much. These guys are in their own right. I just have so much respect for them. Like mm-hmm. they're, they've been out there so long and they've, they've done so much work and he's so well-spoken. He's had more education than I'll ever, ever know. And I know that, but I think if you look at it, you know, everyone, if, if we all just listen to each other and be tolerant, everyone has something to contribute to this. It won't be someone's magic formula that figures this phenomenon out. It'll be, a conglomeration of so many experiences so and some in science too but i think that it's really the attitude that we have to we have to listen to each other and be you know and be intolerant you know be as tolerant as you can be there's there's some people that like do go on social media and they they go on there simply to to egg on a you know a fight and yes. as soon as i i don't engage what i'll do is I'll try and actually get them to calm down a little bit. And sometimes some of the worst ones that come on with their fists swinging, if you kind of just hear them and just a little bit of respect, sometimes they come, they come around and then they still have something to offer. I really believe that. So it's just, you know, keeping an open mind. And, uh, and I think that's really the key. Well, it is. And, you know, I've seen those individuals come to you and it's almost like they're either they're scared because they've had an experience and they're seeking answers or they're angry because this is just a bunch of gobbledygook and why are you even addressing this seriously? You know, there's not a lot of in between for the reasons that they show up. But either mm-hmm. way, they're scared or frustrated. And that does lead to some pretty strong emotions and pretty strong words. And, well, it, yeah, exactly. And I've seen you diffuse those situations. I really admire that. That's what I think my part more than anything. I'm not really a great historian or anything on the whole subject. I get most of my information from like I, my documentaries I've watched. You know, there's some really, really great ones out there. And listening to really, really good people, and there's so many of them on Twitter. There it's are. not just hitters, but there's so many people on Twitter. There's that, that is just, I got on there, and it just, to me, it's you know, you can you can really learn a lot about you know about how people are reacting to the phenomenon. We call it the phenomenon. I just, I call it that, but to me, it's. It's the, you know, ghosts, it's demons. I think, I I don't know, but I think they're related. I really do. The more I get down this rabbit hole, mm-hmm. I, the whole thing is related. You know, I would tend to agree with that. And there seem to be more people coming to this thought process. Why do you feel that they're related? Um... I think that it's in the, I would say probably in the way that it seems to fleet being, you know, uh, like overt. It doesn't like to be, it likes to hang out in the shadows. There's a commonality right there. Mm -hmm. Um, It can be, you know, it can be malevolent to some. It can be great to others. And same with UFOs and and, uh, spirits seem to be the same way. And I think... Um, that's where I think that you, you, you seem to get, and, and they've been, these things have been spotted around places like, you know, graveyards and they've got, you know, videos of this orb coming down over the dome of the rock, like, Mm -hmm. and tried to debunk that so hard. And that was such a public phenomenon. Exactly. You, it's, you can't debunk it. No, but they try so hard and what happens? People are afraid and like, and, you know, for various reasons, like if you're, if you base your whole existence on, 
you know, the Bible, and I'm not knocking the Bible, I'm not knocking any religion, but if you base your whole, your whole worldview on something that's written down, and all of a sudden this thing comes into your world, I would like it, you know, some, some I can see the mindset that would say, you know what, <clears throat> please come along and uh, can somebody just explain this to me, even right. if it means explaining it away and debunking it and that that video is very very compelling like you know and it was shot from several angles as well too and uh there's so many like that and i think that there was a there's a statement there why would that thing that came from the sky obviously it dropped down hang out in such a religious spot so is there you know there's a spirituality kind of connection there right it would still appear. Yeah. Um, that, and that's like, that's where I draw kind of, a, I get my connection from that. I'm not saying I know that for a fact, but my gut tells me there's something, something really related between the two. Maybe not exactly the same, but uh, it could have something to do with existence on a different, you know, in a different reality or a different dimension to a different frequency than we exist on right yes so yeah well you know that goes in with the you know the varying scientific notions i was i was not sure that i was buying into string theory i had actually had a discussion one afternoon with mark d'antonio about that and oh, yeah. I felt yeah. like, you know, we were actually talking about ghosts. And, you know, he's like, well, I just think that it's interdimensional. I said, really? How so? And he said, well, you know, you've got all these little, you know, strings of, you know, dimensions sitting there, and this just pops out. I said, well, that's a great idea. What about residual hauntings? You know, the things that recur at the exact same time with the exact same behaviors that are not random at all. And so that took a minute <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> because he's well, another that's fly in the ointment, isn't it? <laughs> well, and he is fantastic. And, you know, he is, um, he was funny because he was so sure mm -hmm. and he's very supportive. He explains the things to me that I don't, you know, always yeah, yeah. get, but he, yeah, he's, he's awesome. And it's just so much fun to talk to him. But, you know, all of these people are generally the smartest people in the room, wherever they are, right? Until you're at a conference or something, and then they're all there at one time. And that's that's really a cool thing. But, you know, they're, even the best scientific theories have exceptions. Oh, yeah. Like that, you know. I actually yeah. didn't get string theory until I watched Interstellar. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and it's getting toward the oh. end, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's string theory. I understand yeah. it now. So, oh, yep, that movie, yeah. Wasn't that something? Yes, the ending broke my heart. I have yes. three daughters, and uh, the ending broke my heart because he visits uh, his daughter on the deathbed. Yes. That would that that hurt me so I cried in that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just the thought of that. But yeah, with you know, behind the bookcase and it really speaks of that, doesn't it? You know, like it, it really does. It will give you pause. It really will. What's that? I said it gives you pause. It does. It does. You know. Um but talking about uh Mark D'Antonio I remember, uh, geez, I didn't like him at first because he always seemed so debunking. Because <laughs> he's a he's a photo guy, like he can. He take is a, a complete photo guy. Oh God, he can take them apart and you know show you what it is. But that's what you know. That's what we need and and real, real accounts, and you know over time we'll stand up to the test of that. You know, it's Absolutely. we should. Never be afraid. And I think part of me was afraid because he was showing actual sometimes people fake photos or a lens flare or whatnot. But then I heard him talking about something totally different and it blew me away. And I thought, well, I thought he was totally, 
for debunking, but he's not. He's no. He's got he a lot wants, of great. He wants to believe too. Sure. And you know he wants to experience, but mm -hmm. you know he's one of the most fierce people I know, and he came through a situation most people don't survive and did. And, you know, so he is a warrior. And what? so it's really interesting to, to see him as he's pondering this, because I had a picture of a phenomenon that happens here in a small town in Alabama, where a face continues to appear on a courthouse window. Whether the window no. is destroyed, when they replace it, it comes back. And I was showing it to him because I had been there doing, you know, filming a documentary a friend of mine was putting together. And so I just had the pictures on my phone. I was showing Mark and he was like, nope, that's not real. I'm like, it is real. It's happened on every piece of glass that's been replaced there since this man, you know, died in that tower and he was mm -hmm. like no it can't be well i was a i was guilty i was a little offended so <laughs> it was yeah. so funny i was Amazing. like but it's happened for yeah almost a century nope i said well explain it to me so he did and i was like nope he's right but yeah he is, but he is great at that you're absolutely yeah. right but that's and that's another thing too. And like I'm not saying just him, um, but a lot of people. When and with UFOs, they go in, and that's why I get shut down. They say, "Well, it's not real because it's impossible for it to be real." Right. So what they do is we've been, you know, 70 years of well, like to do with UFOs, we've been we've been brain trained to shut it down altogether. They've had the government. I mean. They put so much effort in, like, uh, Project, uh, you know, Project Grudge, Project mm -hmm. uh, Blue Book, and uh, even John J. Allen Hynek said it. They yes. basically got them together, and they said, look, you know, we want you to come up with a certain conclusion. You know, like, so they've, they've trained the populace to basically tune all this out, and uh, we've become, you know, we've to where we believe that we believe that it's impossible for something to exist even in the whole universe i just saw a picture today of a, a little wee spot i don't know what telescope took this shot but you know when you turn on your you know like an old tv set and it looks like snow yes that's what it looks like and all of those are galaxies but yet planet earth mm-hmm that great big bucket of sand is the only grain that's unique. And we just have to pick it out. I don't yes. believe that. It's not a bucket. We're talking about every grain of sand on every beach on planet Earth. There is a, they say, a habitable planet, I believe. So where I don't think we're alone, we're not that unique. I think we're just, I think we're really trapped but more, more the way we're trapped is in our own minds. We refuse to open our minds. We set narrow fences, yes. and we don't think outside of them. We we chastise people that come ahead and speak of it. Even you know we that's the way society. But it is changing. It is, and that, and I like to see that. I like that too. And you know, I am really so Im impressed with the fact that people are coming out who have been involved in government agencies in different places and they're speaking you know you have you have Nick Pope you have Lou Alessandro you have the former gentleman government gentleman from Canada whose name escapes me I know you know it oh, Paul Hellier thank you he was a minister yeah Yes, and I actually got to speak with him, and I was so impressed oh. because he just stood right there and was like, this is absolutely true. Yeah, and, and it's not <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. So old. I don't know if he's still alive even. I think he is. 
Well, I just saw him two years ago. I hope he is. I think he is. If he's listening, sorry. <laughs> I'm glad you're alive. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that, um, I think that it's a very bold thing, even with, you know, some of the things that they still will not talk about. Nick says that, you know, yes, I'm no longer with the Ministry of Defense, but, you know, I am under, still under, you know, the Official Secrets Act where I can't talk about everything. No. And so then you just sit there and go, oh, what aren't you talking about? And then down the rabbit hole you go. So Exactly. <laughs> And you have to you have to give them a break. Like Lou Elizondo, he takes so much heat. He does. For they say, oh, he's lying. He's this. He's that. He didn't work for the Pentagon. They went back and forth and up and down like a toilet seat with this guy, but in and out, up and down, and uh, we they proved it. And then all of a sudden, someone comes out of the woodwork and says, well, he didn't. And then they got this um, Susan Go, which is mm -hmm. a Pentagon spokeswoman, I believe. Um, she says, oh, well, he didn't, and they finally got to admit it, and they actually publicly admitted it. So they're saying, that's what I tell people, your government is telling you, well, oh, by the way, we'll tell you now because you forced us into a corner to tell you the truth, but all along we actually were lying. Oh, sorry. So if they're lying, they'll lie about anything, and and that's not – underhanded i don't believe i believe in national security you can't something that is demonstrates technology that's unfathomable you don't want your adversaries to get that these guys are that sign these ndas they're you know it, it's 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 not only threat of losing their pensions and their livelihood and everything else it's their word the yes. word should mean something. It's your bond. If I ever signed an NDA, I would never, ever, ever break it. No. I've told you that I'm going to keep the same with on Twitter. I'm going to go back to Twitter. People, they direct message, and all of a sudden, someone takes their direct message and posts it on, on publicly on Twitter. Yes. To me, I, that's, I don't, irreprehensible. I just, I just don't. I, I just don't understand that kind of thinking. If I tell you, and, and I've talked to some people, some well-known people that have said some things to me, and I could be at odds with them, like, I'll get out. But I would never post a direct message to them, uh, you know, between to hurt their credibility, because that's your word. It's your bond. It should mean so well, much. Even... even even in the Twitterverse, your word should mean something to you. Absolutely. I agree Absolutely. with that. And I've seen that happen, too. We all have. You know, oh, yeah. Somebody gets ill with someone else, and then boom. So, Ooh, I'll show you what you wrote me and about so-and-so. It's like a bunch of school kids in a schoolyard. Do you know what she said about you? Well, I'm going to put you on my side because, you know, and that get, you know where that gets us? It gets us back to square one. We don't talk. We're angry with each other. And who wins? The no secret one. key. Yeah, well, nobody I mean, wins. Nobody wins in that scenario. You know, I yeah. am I am just so fascinated because my initial my initial part of investigating and experiencing has been in what's considered the paranormal field. You know, ghost spirits. I consider anything not normal to be in the paranormal field. You know, cryptids and everything. I I am just amazed by all the different things that happen to people. And very few people really lend credibility to that. Right? No, there's a lot of brush off. There is. Yeah. And so... Um, yeah, I do need to let people know that y'all are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. This is Fate Mag Radio. I am Kat Hobson, the voice of Fate, if you will. One of my friends gave me that moniker, and I like it, so I use it sometimes. But I am just so surprised that 
that there's so little actual discussion. You know, like when you started having your experiences, you were a kid. Yeah. You were a, little, a fairly young kid. You were oh, it was, it doing sleepovers, so, you know, you were... Remember, yeah. But what... When... Because you said that you got into ufology in 2009 when your daughter had some, some photos. Yeah. So between when you were a little boy and you ran home, um, you know, was it just spiritual, paranormal from that point until you actually were faced with photos of UFOs? Um, I was always interested in it um, because uh, a friend of mine that uh, I'll, I'll, I will tell you that story. It's more of a kind of a, it's about a seance. But uh, I got, I would say, I was always interested. Um, a friend of mine really got me interested in UFOs. And we used to take, uh, <laughs> back in, this is a little, quite a while ago, back in the 60s, we'd take tar and we'd make little flying saucers on the lampposts. <laughs> it's funny because I, I went back there about, oh, I'd say probably 10 years ago now. I'm, you know, I'm 59 and I went back there, and that little flying saucer was still on one of the cement lampposts. <laughs> but I, you know, there was always the interest. Um, I saw, I remember coming out into the street one night, and I saw, I think it was five. Um, they were orange balls. They were quite a ways up. <clears throat> be a few thousand feet anyways. And they went from one side of the horizon to the other with no sound and very, very fast and perfect formation. And I thought to myself, well, what is that? Um, and uh, uh, from then, I still, it, it was, I guess, I, for, around the same time period, I used to have a, like we had a cottage, a trailer. And we used to, there, some of the trailers that were in this park were empty. They were abandoned, right? Right. So you would go in and play, you know, like kids would do, you'd play spin the bottle or you'd play uh card games or whatnot and you would you'd have a candle because there was no hydro there well we were in uh this one cottage one time and uh my buddy came bursting in the door and he said there's a flying saucer outside oh my god and i said, <laughs> and I said I, like great i was right up and out the door and <laughs> this lady standing in the middle of the field and they're kind of you know around her and uh, what had happened was that it wasn't really, I don't think it was a flying saucer. It was a great big uh, red glowing ball that came down above the trees. Now, I never saw this thing. But uh, the, this lady saw it. And my sister, she was, she would be about, I don't know, I guess maybe mm, 20 at the time. She saw it. And wow. uh, there was a plane or something nearby, and it was kind of playing dogfight with the plane, kind of going near it, stopping abruptly, and then shooting up and then coming down. And then it took off. So they were all freaked out. And then there was a lot of people that had seen this thing. And, I, you know, they don't just come out of the blue and make that up. So we, for a few nights after that, we sat outside in lawn chairs watching every light in the sky we could. And we saw some pretty interesting things, but nothing that you couldn't say, well, that's that's definitely not a chopper or, you know. So really, I didn't really see anything. But that, that, was, that sparked my interest as well. And um, my sister once again had a, an encounter. She was driving on the way to work. And uh, she it was kind of foggy out. It was in the morning. And she said there was a, a like a kind of a dome shaped thing in the middle of the highway. So she kind of stopped, like, or slowed ground? down. Yeah, it was right in the right on the road, right okay. sitting on the road. So she looked at it. I said, Well, what did you do? Did you get out? She goes, No, she says, I, I just thought it was kind of weird. Maybe it was the top off of a silo. <laughs> but I well, thought, they... you know, that's odd. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's bizarre, but I, that's she a possibility. Found it in the way I went. I was like, holy, cr- <laughs> holy crow. <laughs> well, you know, she just probably didn't want to take a chance, right? That's right, you know, and um, uh, the house that I lived in, it was, um, that was in Toronto, the first house. And my dad saw a spirit at the end of his bed that was praying. And, uh, but, but your original thing was how, it was quite a while, like UFOs have been around, but not right directly. I haven't really could say that, oh my God, I know what that is. I've, you know, like. Back in those days, no, I uh, it was it was more people that I knew um, that, uh, but it always kept me interested, and I was always and I knew about the the other side, the ghost side, the the um, you know the demonic and that and the strange strange happenings that that's been more the the uh, the the thing that I've had direct interaction with um but i've always ufos uh that's always been right there and then what sparked it in 2009 once again was uh my daughter come to me one time and it was just after me and my wife had split up and she said dad i was outside last night and i took some pictures and there was a light in the sky and it was really weird and i said oh yeah and she goes, well, yeah, she took them with, you know, it was an older cell phone, right? So she took these pictures and I said, uh, so what were they? She goes, well, they kind of were just lights. And so I've just dismissed it as all that's going to be on that phone is little dots in the sky, which are, what does that say, right? Right. So never thought much about it. And then about a year or so later, she come up to me. She had gotten a new phone. She says, you want to see those pictures? You know, I think before I get rid of my phone or something, I said, sure. Well, what happened was there was about seven pictures. And it was as she snapped the pictures, the the thing was moving so fast. It left like a light trail, a zigzag. And at the top of the zigzag, you could see was a dome shaped kind of funny looking little saucer thing. And so I asked her, what was it doing? She said, well, it was going back and forth and up and down. And then it stayed in one spot. And then she took a picture of that. And I said, then what did it do? She said, it just went shoom and took off right out of sight so fast. So I had those pictures. I sent them into the weather network here. Uh, it was actually the Toronto, Toronto, Ontario weather network. And um, never heard a reply back. And um, I would say a little while later, the only one that I really downloaded onto my computer was a the still shot which was really fuzzy and those other ones just disappeared they went uh, gone out of my email now i don't know what happened but the still shot if you i blew it up on a, a desktop computer right and that shows a beige colored pyramidic it looks like a beige colored triangle with a Kind of a saucer-shaped light ship shooting a beam into it. <laughs> Weirdest thing. And I've been that trying. That is bizarre. Yeah, and you know what? This is from taken from a little girl, and she's not going to lie. I know she wasn't lying. Right. And uh, I've been trying to find that uh, picture, and uh, at least I got one. I know I got one somewhere of that. And that got me really, something clicked. I think it it really started to get my interest. And I would say probably around 2015, uh, I woke up one day and I just, something, it was almost like someone put a chip inside my head and switched the on shit on, on switch. And, uh, I just, it was, it became sad to say like an obsession. Right. I got to find out what this is. And it has not shut off since it's like, there is a purpose to it. I can't tell you what it is, whether it's to wake people up, whether it's to, um, I don't know what it's about, but I, I follow it. And that's why I'm on Twitter so much with it and, uh, and trying to keep people, keep the conversation going. That's so important. And that's why, that's why I, you know, I've been a kind of a proponent of 
TTSA with all the, you know, the, they've taken a lot of criticism. I get it. People should be skeptical, but they've, they've brought the subject out so, so much. And there's, there is a lot of people in there that, you know, that, uh, the whole team is made up of, <laughs> there's ex CIA guys in there. There's, you know, physicists, there's Tom DeLong, like a punk rocker. I didn't even know who the guy was. Well, I knew who he was, but I was like stunned that he was who was heading this up when it started. Because I was like, really? Yeah. Like Hmm. a That's interesting. And it was interesting. Yeah, and he I uh I found with uh with him at the first, you know, I kept seeing the name come up with and whenever I looked up the UFOs, so I figured I'd Google this guy and see what's going on and then uh he started talking about, uh, you know, there's big things coming, big things coming. And then he kind of went uh, radio silent. Mm-hmm. So I even, I remember uh, posting something saying that, you know, this guy's full of malarkey. <laughs> like he's, you know, I remember saying that because that's around the time that the WikiLeaks happened, right? Right. And I think that's what shut them down, you know. But uh, I watched them and I've been steadily watching them. And I go by gut, too. My gut says these guys are, you know, even though they're CIA and all that, maybe maybe it's not 100% totally everything's all innocent. But I think they're doing the right thing. And I think, you know, people just have to kind of get let them see where they go, you know. Well, I think, shut- that, I think part of the controversy with, with TTSA is that out of nowhere, this sprung. And people who have been working on this for their entire lifetime. Oh, yeah. Seriously, their entire lifetime. Yeah. Were never given access. People who are considered to be leaders in this field were never mm-hmm. given access. And the fact that now they're presenting as um, the threat not interactive, right. but a threat. Um, it's yeah, it's got a lot so, of people, yeah, and rightfully so, Kat. Well, I, I really, rightfully so. Well, we're going to have to take a break, and because sure. we just blew through that first one, and we will be right back. I knew this was going to get me in trouble. It's way too fascinating, but we will be right back after this. Y'all come back too. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, come on. I'm Southern, but... Um, nope. That'll do. Hello, I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. This is Jason Bland, host of Midwest Paranormal Presents Paranormal Soup, where we stream live as a webcast every Sunday night, 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern, with guests who will blow your mind. Live ghost box sessions where you can call into the show to see if the spirits will talk to you. And the World Wide Web of Weird, with the latest in paranormal news and evidence. We're bringing the weird every Sunday night, 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern, on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow and subscribe. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live, live, live out of Birmingham, Alabama. 
you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 45 minutes after the hour. Welcome back to Fate Magazine Radio. I am Kat Hobson, your host, and I am so enjoying my conversation with Carl Anderson. We are talking UFOs. He has the he has the trifecta of lifetime experiences. So it's um it's it is so much fun to converse with them. I hope y'all are enjoying it as much as I am. But we were talking about TTSA and about yeah, you know, the fact that there are people that have issues with them. And I totally understand that because as we were saying, there are people, you know, like Dolan who exactly. has their whole life professionally wrapped up in disclosure, trying to get disclosure, trying to get information. And then you have experiencers who say, no, this is not a militant, you know, experience. These are people who are here to help us. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not, they're not taking out our military. They watch them. But then again, there was also a whale migration at that time. Maybe they were there for the whales. You know, I mean, if they were, if they had poor intent, I think when that radar locked on and the, the Tic Tac chose to, you know, shoot left instead of, you know, take off left instead of shoot back behind them, I think that was a very fortunate thing because I think that could have gone any way. If you put a radar lock on somebody, they are not going to care for that. That's right, and you wouldn't you wouldn't even want to do that in a you know altercation with Russian or Iranian pilots or anybody else that didn't know what you were doing. So, um, yeah, exactly. You know, but it was just kind of like, yeah, we're not going to mess with you. Hmm. Um, yeah, it would have been over a long time ago. <laughs> That's what have. I. If they were truly. You know, I, yeah. And I and I'll give you my take on the the threat angle that they've that they've come out with. Um, I think this is my just my opinion. Okay. But Congress and in governments aren't really into what people think they've seen or their mm-hmm. beliefs, what they've experienced. But one thing, and you you have to admit this in today's society, you go to work and you. You, you, you say that there's a hinge missing off the door, and you let your boss know by email that that door is going to fall on someone and hurt them one day. By golly, he's right on it nowadays because of litigation. So it's the – it's I think with TSSA, what they've done is they've come along with this threat angle, and it's prompted people in Congress to say, you know what? I ain't going to be the one that's going to ignore this and then have something disastrous happen with a with an F-18 or whatever hitting something. I'm going to I'm going to I want to say something about it that there is something in our airspace that is a threat to aviation. But to actually um to to really say that well it's a threat so let's shoot our nuclear or our you know powder-based weapons at it. That's like I don't know. To me, that's like cavemen throwing stones at someone with a, you know, an AK-47. It's just this. The, it's such a uh, it, the the technology. I think the technology is there to just probably end the world by whatever this thing is or they are. So the threat angle, I think, more um, is is for just to wake up government. Um, I really, that's what I think, like, I think more than anything, you know, because I do believe that even if we don't know it, I think the phenomenon, this, and this is, uh, you know, demonic and all that is all tied in. And I really believe it's, it's, it, it's, it's schooling us. It's schooling us for development, even as, as awful as it seems sometimes, if you look at it, um, even de- even demons, you know, I really don't know when the last time a, like a demon really 
attacked and, and, and hurt a bunch of people or a bunch of demons got together and did this. It's usually man. Man feeds into this, and then man creates the atrocities. So, and then he says, well, the demons. So I think that the whatever it is is trying to teach us that we we have to start looking at each other and treating each other better because we can't well, blame 100%. it. 100%. Right, we are we are responsible for our actions, and um, you know, uh, I and what you were talking about with uh, Richard Dolan there, and I get it. Like these guys have devoted they're they're incredibly intelligent and hard hard working people, and they have stood up to uh, such ridicule. Oh yeah, yeah, and you know there was him and there's Steve Bassett. They did the 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 since disclosure. That's huge. That's so huge. huge. Linda it Wolf is. and Hal. I mean, yeah, there's so she's many a- people who this has been their life's work because it matters. Yeah. And to yeah. me, yeah, exactly. Like, that's when when DeLong come along like that, and you got this punk, you know, thumbing his finger at the world and whatever and uh, screaming his head off, and all of a sudden he's privy to stuff that they could only – Dream. Imagine, but I yeah. think the reason behind that is they weren't looking. They wanted to build a bridge. They know that this is going to come out somehow because of the internet. Yes. So they wanted to get the most painless way of doing it. So they, what I think it is, and they can disagree with me, but I think a lot of it is control of a narrative. Well, sure. You can't, you can't just let this stuff out and say, oh well. Oh, by the way, my, you know, like my uncle was a general and he, you know, was, uh, you know, back in 1947 and he beat the crap out of someone that said they saw a flying saucer. You can't just because everyone's going to be like, you know, get your torches and pitchforks and that you can't do that. You have to present it. And it's as, as underhanded as it sounds, this kind of information, if they, you know, they. And obviously, it is kind of a drip feed to me. If it's let out without a narrative, you're going to have people. You think the rioting in the streets is bad now? You're really going to have, and they'll be going right after the government. They got yes. to. They have to control the narrative. It's the only responsible thing to do. Well, that's um, that's a great thought, but they can only control the narrative so long as there is not. A mass global sighting. That's again. That's uh, like look what happened in Phoenix. Uh, there you go. Yeah. yeah that's that's uh, that's and that's always a possibility. Eh? Do you do you ever think that there's some kind of a communi- communication between you know governments and the actual beings or whatever? I do. I'm convinced of it because. The, the whole thing is just too much. You know, there's there have been so many discussions of government, not full government, okay, but mm. government players involved in interaction from Churchill's period currently. I mean, we have two, um, we have two ex-presidents who had UFO experiences, Ronald Reagan and Jimmy Carter. So, you know, it's just, you know, Shelly in chat says that she thinks the government communicates with them. So Mm -hmm. otherwise we would have already been trying to do something. I mean, they went and shut down nuclear weapons. We know that. Yeah, absolutely. They literally did that. So any government that was not commuting communicating with someone who had that capability and had used it would be would be just worse than what we already think they are mm-hmm. <laughs> right i mean yeah. yeah i mean that is a serious you know dereliction of duty you would have to yeah. find a way to communicate if there were and if obviously they were trying so they would have made it easy to do but I do think that there was interaction well before that. Oh, I do too. I think that it's been going on for quite a while. And that's why I kind of think sometimes, and I ask myself this, have, the, have, have we 
as a species been given a mandate you know clean up your act because uh if you don't we will you know yes. kind of a thing yes it's the old uh you know that the day the earth stood still scenario i've heard talk that that's actually kind of a little bit of truth to that so you know because wow. in in we know that i mean if if my opinion on it is if the the actual the ufo phenomenon um was malevolent and it didn't have our best interest um it would have messed things up so bad before you know um before long before this for something's been there i think it's been i don't know why but it's been kind of hiding maybe it doesn't want to interfere maybe it maybe it, it's something that we have to learn ourselves to evolve spiritually and uh you know to to be a little bit more compassionate with each other and look more or less globally on mankind and uh you know not not divide us up amongst race and do a, everything else and you know it's uh i think it's it should be uniting and it you know i i kind of think it is in some ways well it brings i think it if people do it correctly, if we were to take this information that we have, we know they're here. Mm -hmm. There's no longer any doubt that something is here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that now you have a unifying, a globally unifying situation where you don't have to just automatically build them as negative, but you can just say, Let's see what we can find. Let's see if we can find evidence. If you find, if you can, you know, contribute evidence, then let's bring you into the discussion. If you cannot, or if you don't believe, we'll provide you with evidence so that you'll know what we're discussing. Boom. Yeah. You've got global attention. You've got global interaction. You've got, you know, a mission, a global mission to learn and educate yourselves about this. And, you know, you talk to the experiencers, the ones that, you know, are being constantly told, we're here to help you. We want to help you. You're endangering yourselves. Let us help you. Mm -hmm. Versus the ones that are like, well, they just want to destroy us and eat us. You know. Yeah. They, to want, me us that... to, they want to hunt us because our adrenaline makes us tasty. You know. Yeah. No. So let's not yeah, go there. Nah. And, I don't believe that. Well, I don't, I don't believe that either. Sense. It just doesn't make sense. Well, you know, I think that if that were the case, there would be a whole lot more than the people reported missing. And I think that there would be remains. Yeah. And they're not. No, there's, so. there's a bigger picture. And I think it's, we, and you know, we only know, we, we can only guess and, uh, uh, I guess speculate with our our own minds what the the overall agenda is um, with it, um, but I I just don't see the you know the the I don't know this mass attack or you know people being like taken up and they pull you all the pieces and they they like your like you say the adrenochrome I believe they call it yes or after that and it's you know this is what they're doing and. I just don't, uh, no. I don't think the universe works that way. <laughs> I really don't. I think the universe, I, I think the universe is a great big, it's a, it's a place to learn and evolve as a spirit. It's, a, it's to evolve as a soul. And, uh, you know, I don't believe that. Why? What's the purpose of, you know, like even getting back to demons and that. So, the devil wins, okay? We, he comes down on earth, and this is what he does. So what are they going to do? They're going to sit there, and they're going to growl and snort at each other all day long, and, oh, we're evil, we're evil. It does not make sense to me. No, it I doesn't. I think it matters. The only all-encompassing power is love. I agree. You know, and it, it, and it, it trumps will, negative. Yeah, and it, it, it just will win. It already has won, I believe. But we have to realize that. As people, yes, that, and not buy you know, into the hype. Out. Yeah, and not believe all the. It's fear. There's so much fear being sown these days. Fear sells. 
you know, just brutal. Like, yeah. look, people are going through with the pandemic and everything. And I believe, yeah, be wise, you know, wear your mask, you know, wash your hands. I work in long term care. You know, we get, you know, you write front, front, center, front and center with it. Some, yes. you know, we've been lucky. We've been, we've kept it out. But I mean, you know, wear your mask and do your, you know, do your part. And, but, you know, like this, like some of the, the media and that, they've, you know, like there's no reason to scare the living daylights out of people. Oh, I just, it sells. I mean, it's the next best thing. To, if it bleeds, it leads. But, yeah. But, you know, we're at the top of the hour, so we have to take our, our top of the hour break. And I am having so much fun. I am just enjoying this to no end. I hope you are, too. But Me, too. It's awesome. Yeah. This is a great time to go and, you know, fill up your beverage container, stretch your legs, maybe do a few cartwheels, as Brian Parsons used to say. And we will be back after this. And you know what I always say? It's the news break. I am so constantly hoping for just a little good news, right? Someday, we're going to get that. So we'll be right back. Y'all come back to you. Live from NPR News, I'm Janine Herbst. The second highest ranking Senate Democrat is conceding that there's no path to halting the confirmation of Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the nation's high court. NPR's Barbara Sprunt has more. Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois told ABC's This Week there is no silver bullet for Democrats to stop Barrett's nomination from advancing. We could slow it down, perhaps a matter of hours, maybe days at the most, but we can't stop the outcome. Durbin, a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee, went on to say he believes Barrett should recuse herself on any case brought before the Supreme Court dealing with the results of the 2020 election. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has the support of Republicans to move forward with the confirmation process. Barbara Sprunt, NPR News. But protesters are not giving up. Daniela Cheslow of member station WAMU has more from outside the Supreme Court. A few hundred demonstrators stand at the foot of the Supreme Court. Some are wearing masks that read honor her wish and others hold pink signs from Planned Parenthood. They demand the Senate not confirm a new Supreme Court justice ahead of the November election following the precedent Republican senators set during the Obama administration. The demonstrators say they will return here every day and urge Democratic senators to use any means necessary to block the confirmation of Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court. For NPR News, I'm Daniela Cheslow. A six-day extension for counting absentee ballots in Wisconsin has been temporarily halted by a federal appeals court. Today's decision by the 7th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals is a momentary victory for Republicans in the key state. It means ballots will now be due by 8 p.m. on Election Day. A lower court judge had sided with Democrats to extend the deadline until November 9th to give them more time to deal with an expected high number of absentee ballots. A power shutoff is underway for 65,000 customers in California's northern and central Sierra region due to extreme fire risk. From member station KQED, Sarah Hosseini has more. PG&E says it will de-energize certain electrical lines amid strong, gusty winds expected to persist through Monday morning. Officials say power can be restored once workers ensure no lines were damaged. In a recent report to state regulators, the utility revealed that its crews found widespread damage to equipment after its last shutoff earlier this month. They included downed lines, snapped poles, and branches that had blown into wires, all of which it says could have sparked wildfires had they not been turned off. For NPR News, I'm Sarah Hosseini. In Northern California's wine country, meanwhile, the fast-moving glass fire that broke out this morning has now burned some 1,200 acres, and firefighters say it is 0% contained. Evacuation orders have been issued par- parts of the Napa Valley. The cause of that blaze is under investigation. This is NPR. French President Emmanuel Macron says Belarus's president, Alexander Lukashenko, must step down, echoing hundreds of thousands of protesters in Minsk. NPR's Eleanor Beardsley reports. In an interview with prominent Sunday newspaper Le Journal de Dimanche, Macron called the situation in Belarus a crisis of authoritarian power hanging on by force. 
The people of Belarus are facing a brutal crackdown from the longtime dictator as they take to the streets every week to protest what they say was a rigged election on August 9th. By calling on Lukashenko to go, Macron is going farther than the European Union, which has said it does not recognize the legitimacy of his election. The EU's hands are tied as it tries to avoid another crisis like in Ukraine. Russia is Lukashenko's biggest financial and diplomatic backer, and President Vladimir Putin has promised Belarus law enforcement backup. Eleanor Beardsley, NPR News, Paris. Swiss voters have rejected a proposal by a right-wing party to end a major immigration accord with the EU. Lisa Schlein has more. Switzerland's anti-immigration bill has been likened to Brexit. However, unlike the United Kingdom, the vast majority of Swiss decided they didn't want to get a divorce from the European Union. They fought off a right-wing proposal to scrap a two-decade-old free movement of people accord with the EU. They accepted the argument that preventing skilled foreigners from working in Switzerland would be bad for the economy. Lisa Schlein reporting. And I'm Janine Herbst. And you're listening to NPR News. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome back to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is five minutes after the hour. Welcome back for the second hour of Fate Magazine Radio. I am Kat Hobson. I am your host, and I am so glad that you are here. I hope that you got to listen to that first hour because it was amazing. My guest is Carl Anderson. We met each other through Twitter, believe it or not, UFO Twitter. We have had similar experiences. He is someone who I find fascinating. He's kind of like a a really terrific, not really a mediator, but he kind of helps people keep focused on the conversation when tempers tend to flare. And there are a lot of really smart, really experienced, knowledgeable people in that group of individuals. And they're pretty much intelligent, I would say. There's some great educations that are um, being put into play with that. And Carl, you really do a good job of kind of keeping them focused, kind of refereeing maybe. Yeah, I hate uh, hate to use the word referee. In fact, uh, you know, it's just trying to... to, uh, My biggest thing is, uh, Elizondo said it too, Lou Elizondo is... Yes. The goal is really not uh, so much disclosing anything, which I really don't have anything too much to disclose that, that not anybody else is privy to. But um, it's really just to keep the conversation going, yes. to keep people asking questions. And they should be questioning, like organizations like TT, TTSA ask the questions. And, uh, you know, just the, my biggest thing is um, – don't get to the point where you look at something and you just dismiss it. Right. You just say, well, this, this is not bunk. Um, and uh, they, uh, that, that happens. People do that and they say, well, the Tic Tac, for instance, the UFO, they'll say, well, that's, you know, that's definitely not ours and it's alien tech. When you do that, you've reached a conclusion before you have really any data. And uh, you, it, it, it fuzzes up what it, it could actually be. It actually could be something that we don't know, you know. I, I, I tend to say no. I think it's, uh, it's something uh, that's paranormal. I, I think that it's – whether it's aliens or it's interdimensional or someplace else, I don't know. But uh, the thing is to keep that conversation going. Be, be kind to each other. Listen to each other. And, uh, you know, keep the topic relevant, keep asking, keep drilling, you know, asking your, your Congress people or in Canada here, you know, your MPs, as much of a quack as you might sound, eventually you will break through. Yes, you do. And, you know, I don't ever really mind taking, you know, wearing that quack hat. 
I was privy to information coming out of the um, South American research labs back in the 80s when I worked for a cancer organization. And the things that we use nowadays as standard practice with varying cancers was written off as quackery and reported as such. So, oh, wow. um, you know, that was something that I really found fascinating. And from that point on, my whole attitude changed because I knew that these people were actually doing testing here with the things that they were writing off and people were being touched by that. So I'm never, I'm never bashful about wearing a quack hat <laughs> anymore. No, no, it actually kind of, uh, it signifies that, hey, you know what? I've been kind of ostracized because of my open-mindedness. Yeah. <laughs> so you you wear that hat, and it's true. Uh, you know, it, it's 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 we're in strange times, and nobody can deny that. And uh, the only way that it's going to get people through this is keeping an open mind and stick, you know, sticking together, and uh, don't sh- shut each other down. Just you you listen and. Uh, you know, n- not everything you hear is the reason or the truth, but everything's going to add up. There's no one winner in this. It, the only way we're going to find things out is um, collectively sharing information. And even like as far as the phenomenon goes, one th- one way we find out is look for commonalities. What What's happening all the time? Why is it happening this? Why does it happen here more than there? Why is it, um, you know, what is it doing? Is it is it always jamming radar? Is it, uh, you know, why is it doing this? Why did two people that witness the same event see different things? Is there a reason behind that? Does it is part of the reason that it, it may be for some reason it's getting us to question each other? Maybe who knows? But uh, you have to, you know, again listen to each other and uh, and and. Keep that, keep the conversation open because when you shut it down, we end up where we were 70 years ago. Just, oh, well, nothing's, you know, there's the sky, there's the birds, there's the the earth, there's no such things as ghosts. And, you know, there's not this and there's not that. And uh, Earth's pretty boring. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Uh, there's there's a lot more. There is a lot more. And I find that just to be a blessing. Truly, but it we is. have a couple of questions for you. Sure. Um, what do you think of Area Fifty One? Um, well, it you know uh, it it's been there for I think believe it was created in the fifties to test you know like the latest army or the latest Air Force uh, hardware, and uh, you wanted to keep that away from the Russians. And so they got this big piece of land and cordoned it off, and that's what they did. Now, um, I think it's a possibility that part of that was used to – it's funny that it was just – 1947 was Roswell, okay? Yes. So 1947, they created the Air Force, the – you know, basically the entity called the Air Force. 1947, they – what else? They created, uh, uh, I believe, the CIA. They did. Indeed. Just months after Roswell, okay? So, and then, you know, they wanted to, all of a sudden, it became necessary to have this great, we're going to need a lot of land because for some reason, you know, so in 50s, and I believe it was the early 50s when they created Area 51. And I think it's probably it could be connected to things like Roswell. It's uh, you know you land you stumble onto something that that is you know generations if not more ahead in technology. You're going to test it and you're going to study it where nobody is. Well, you're so, right. And on top of that, you know we went from. You know, the the Dirigibles and the Wright brothers to, mm-hmm. you know, fighting war th- wartime planes. Mm-hmm. And then we went fairly quickly to jets. We went mm-hmm. from 
horse and buggies to model T's to mm -hmm. those beautiful beasts of the 40s and 50s, you know, to Teslas. Absolutely. That's a jump, you if know, you think about it. Right? A huge jump. Yeah. Nothing else had jumped like that. No. And the whole time that there have been humans walking the earth. So, you know, it's just really fascinating to me that people blow this stuff off. And I'm like, have you looked around you? <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we didn't have the correct materials for the, for the Concord because the wings wound up breaking. The structure wasn't strong enough for the power of the Concord. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're actually beyond our abilities in some things. So what do you think about Lazar? Um, this, this, <laughs> This is another polarizing topic that everyone, you know, either they love the guy or hate him. It's almost, it's, it's just like Lazar and Trump. <laughs> Sorry, but they, it's true. It's it, they, they, as soon as they start talking about him, they shut each other down. Um, actually, I believe him. I believe him too. Yeah. Um, I don't see why know, he would lie. There's no, I don't see a reason for the lying. Um, um, again, I'm going with, actually, I've talked to him briefly. I have um, not just, had that opportunity. Well, mine was just basically I ordered uh, something from his company, which is United Nuclear. Awesome, awesome company. I'll give them a little plug. They're, uh, I think they're in Oregon now. I'm not sure. But uh, they sell all kinds of really great scientific stuff, magnets and lasers and everything. It's, it's, it's just a great company. It really is for, for people that are into science, but also for young kids and that, you know, like that are getting into it. But anyways... Um, no, he, he, my gut feeling, I saw him back when he first, uh, this was uh, back in the 80s, and my mother saw him on TV, and I watched it, and it was riveting. This isn't a man that's lying to me, not at all. I don't care what, I mean, I respect Stanton Fried, Friedman, and uh, I think he's an awesome, he's done so much for the topic as well, but right away, he dismissed Lazar, and I understand the reasons. You know, but he totally dismissed him, and I don't believe in doing that. I just will not. I always keep a little bit of a, you know, and Lazar, there's a lot of things he said that has come true and come to pass. What's the first one that sticks out in your head? Um, the first one is basically the discovery of the element 115. Mm -hmm. You know, a stable one, uh, stable 115, and, and is just... Him describing how the uh, either you know an antimatter an antimatter reactor works and uh, it makes sense when he describes it. These either the best most accomplished CIA one hundred percent model of a liar that there ever was in planet Earth, or he's telling the truth, right? He's uh, that's what really sticks out to me with and the in the tests. The Wednesday night tests, he took reporters there. He took friends and said, look, this thing's going to shoot up in the sky. It's going to dance around, and you can film it. And it's going to be Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock. And sure enough, Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock, they filmed it. Right? So, I mean, he he predicted that. He knew that. Um, George Knapp took him around Los Alamos Labs, and he knew his way, like you said, like a rat going through a maze. Right. He knew his way through that. You know, he knew his borough there, and he people recognized him. But I really believe that they didn't think that he was going to do what he was going to do. And I think they tried their best to erase that guy's past. They were pretty and, effective. With oh, yeah. very few exceptions. Yeah, yeah. They Well, they have, you know, you figure that they must have a lot of control over a lot of things, eh? So... And uh, yeah, that's big information, and uh, they think they. I think there's some that guard that, with uh, like you don't want to mess around with that. I think if you're into that, and you you're into that, like I said, with uh, an NDA, and I guess well, he must have signed all that too. I wouldn't have. The only way I would have come forward if I was him is the reason he did. He thought his life was in danger, and that's why he came forward. You know, because of uh, to protect himself, but I think he's legit. I really do. I kind of do too. 
I have, um, I just think so. I just feel that. I, there was way too much effort to discredit him mm -hmm. for him not to be ha having something that scared people. Yeah. With his information. He yeah, otherwise they just say, yeah, he's just a quack. Just let him go spout off or whatever. But yeah. I've uh, I've been on Twitter, and I remember uh, – there's been a few times, but I remember one time putting a thing about Lazar there, and someone just saying, why don't you shut your mouth, Carl? Like something like that, you know, right. something real. Because it makes people mad sometimes because – For various reasons, right? Yeah, but we've got to take a break, believe it or not. And oh, wow. we, I know, right? We will be right back. Thank y'all for being here, and you come right back too with Carl Anderson. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. Talk Radio is your one stop for all things paranormal, the unknown, and the supernatural. Join us every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central for discussions and guests on topics such as ghosts, hauntings, Bigfoot, UFOs, and more. This broadcast is rated M for mature and intended for listeners over 16 on paratalkradio.com. Oh, come on. I'm Southern, but... Um, nope. That'll do. Hello. I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Since 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange, and bizarre. Join host Cat Hops Sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on WBHM Digital Broadcast. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. Since 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange, and bizarre. Join host Cat Hops Sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on WBHM Digital Broadcast. The time is 23 minutes after the hour. Welcome back to Fate Mag Radio. I'm so glad you're here. We are the online voice of Fate Magazine, and I'm thrilled about that. That's my favorite magazine, and I just... I'm so honored to be part of this group of people. Tonight, I am joined by Carl Anderson. We met on UFO Twitter. He is someone I respect greatly. We have been just chatting away, and we have a couple of things. Um, one is, do you think disclosure is actually going to happen? Um. Publicly. I'm going to quote someone, and I again, like not to be a, oh, I called myself a TTSA fanboy, <laughs> but I'm going <laughs> to quote Luis Elizondo, and uh, he said, and I agree totally, disclosure is really not an event. It's a process. We are going through it now. And actually, we've been, it's been, disclosure actually is, has been happening, but we're getting more of like, we're looking for more confirmation 
Um, and it's not going to be just one day. Um, I think even if an official stood up and said, well, you know what, this is what it is. I think people are still going to say, well, they're crazy. You know, there's this or that. But again, you have to look at the Pentagon has just said, we have things in our airspace that are interacting with our Navy pilots. They are unidentified. That's a big, big statement. If you really that think is a about big it. statement, it's huge. It's, it's your government telling you that is not ours. And they can say what they want about, oh, well, it's ours. It's us testing our own hardware against our own men and women, which is, if that were ever found out, there'd be a lot of accountability to. So I doubt highly that that's the case. I think you're getting disclosure. It is kind of a, a bit of a drip feed, yeah. But we've had some big events. And the Pentagon coming ahead like that is, that's a pretty big event. And actually, the president has been briefed on it. It's, they wouldn't just brief him if it wasn't uh, legitimate. So I think that you're getting disclosure as a process. And yes. uh I think it's being done right. I really do. I think it's has to be done responsibly, and we just can't. And I and believe me, I'm not privy to any information at all. But I really believe the responsible way is to. It has to come with a narrative. It has to come with information for people. But there's more to come. I'm sure there's way more to come. You're going to be. I think you'll be pleased in the long run. Well, you know, I was sitting there thinking. We live in a post-disclosure world because mm -hmm. when they shut down Project Blue Book, there were still like, I uh, can't remember the number. I should have written that down, but I didn't expect it. Um, there was something like 700, 761 maybe, cases that they could not explain away. Mm -hmm. So they had... Those were UFOs, unexplained, flying objects, okay? So they didn't bill that. Was that why? They cleared like 1,400 cases, but there were so many that they didn't. And nobody mm -hmm. ever considers that saying, yep, yeah, they're UFOs. So. There's you know. part, like, you're right, Kat. There, that's partial disclosure right there, and you have to look at those numbers. People ignored you... that. They do, and those numbers are actually very, very, very conservative because Project Blue Book didn't have disclosing everything in for the public's better in, at heart. It was basically, exactly. a, yeah, even Hynek said it, it was created much like Project Grudge to explain things away, to get the people, to get the public gaze away from this, this subject. Mm -hmm. It needs to, you know, and that's, you know, it's, it, we've had a, we just have to absorb it. We have to keep on it and keep asking questions. Demand, demand answers from from government, and just don't let it go. We've been we've gone down that for seventy years. Well, there's nothing we tried. We we you know we got our best. We got the Air Force to investigate it. That's a fox in the hen house. There's no way. You know what? Now it's we've got the internet. Now it's us. Yes, Push we're for doing it. it. Yes, we're doing it, and it's it's moving because it's in the news now. It's even here in Canada. It's starting to get in the news quite a bit, and you're seeing where they can't ignore it. And it's going to there's that tipping point, and then it'll be not cool to cover it up anymore. In fact, it'll be a liability to keep it secret, and that's where we're going to get the big tipping point where people are going to really, really say, "Hey, you know what? This is real." And everyone's going to be talking about it. Well, I am. It is a liability. It's already a liability. And, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, Shelly in chat says, keep demanding. Then you end up on the CIA and FBI watch list. <laughs> and I actually, yeah, um, yeah. I'm sure I'm on some. Yeah. You know, like we always look at that, too. I mean. I think that that attitude, honestly, I, I don't really know, but I think that they kind of want to, I don't think they want to be left holding this great big ball of goop. They want to kind of <laughs> let it out. 
You know what? Yeah, yes. they, that's why. That's why you got guys like Jim, uh, Jim Semivan. I think he's had some experiences himself. I think they want to get it out, but they don't want. You don't want to destroy people by doing it. No, you don't. You know, just people that back in the wartime they had to make decisions to protect again national security. We just come out of the Second World War, you know, and all of a sudden, like I mean, if it happened. Roswell, like a you know, bloody flying saucer lands and crashes or does whatever it does, and you've got all this tech and everything, you know, you, and you you release a newspaper and it says, yeah, we found a flying saucer, and then your generals, your your president looks at it and says, well, uh, I don't think we should say this, and then they retract it within twelve they, hours. They, yep, and cover it all up, and once they cover it up, you're not to talk about it because, again, we were. People were terrified in World War II, yes. and we were so glad when we, we defeated Hitler, and uh, he was going to take over the world. So people, you know, they didn't, that was, that's national security on the biggest level. Yes, it is. And they had what they did. I believe it. I really do. I think there's a lot of great people, and I know I'm going to be hated for this, too. I think there's a lot of great people in the CIA. I think there's a lot of great people at the Pentagon. You know, I think there's, there, they could be your aunts and uncles. They could be your dad. They could be your son, your daughter working there. You can't blanket hate them, right? You can't blanket hate any group. And yet, no. as humanity, we seem to be excellent at doing that. Yes. It's so easy. It's the easy way out. But defining the good, that's that takes effort, right? It does. And it takes reflection. And being the good. Exactly. And being actually effort. that way. Because if you, once you admit that you're you're not perfect and uh, you're admitting you can change yourself, right? Right. And you can, which that's my soap. I always close with something relevant to that, so we'll wait because I don't need to be on that soapbox twice in one, you know, one show. But <laughs> um, <laughs> I am so surprised. We actually have questions here about your... Um, demonic experiences are you comfortable with talking about that sure absolutely um well basically it was one and um it started when i was i would say i don't know my exact age then i guess it would be nine ten somewhere in around there i knew this kid on my street he was really intelligent he was into like believe it or not cooney form and uh like Egyptology and electronics and oh yeah we and I love science too and fossils and all that kind of thing but he was also into um you know the paranormal right and you know kids are interested in that right they what is that you know well one night I was slated to have a sleepover at his place so I remember we you know, just goofing around, looking at books and things like that. And he decided to have a seance. So we had this, there was me, him, his sister, and his brother. And we put the lights down and we lit a candle and we had this seance. And he said some things out of the little, I don't know if he had them written down or they're out of a book. It's so long ago. But nothing happened. The table didn't fly around the room. Nothing happened. But... About a half an hour after that, I got so ill, and I just wanted to go home. You know, nine years old or whatever, I just wanted my mom. Right. So um, he wanted me to stay, but I just decided I ended up walking home. I remember walking home and not even putting my shoes on. So I had my pajamas on, bare feet or socks, and walked up the street. It was only about a minute walk. I went in, went to bed, and I was down with pneumonia for about, I guess, it was probably a week with horrible, horrible nightmares and so, like, terrible lucid dreaming of different things and monsters and things like that, all kinds of things that would scare the hell out of a kid. And um, it, from then on, these dreams persisted and it, it what it worked into was uh this child i said a child demon 
would catch up to me, almost catch me in my dreams, and he had a bunch of followers, and they would chant his name, and then they kept saying something. I couldn't, I made it out eventually, and um, but I couldn't hear it clearly. And uh, what happened was, uh, I remember in one of my dreams, I asked the people in the dream, I said, who is that? And they said, don't you know him? His name's Iritum. And I didn't know, like, I mean, what, I mean, a kid, what's he going to know about that? I never thought anything about, about that. And when I was in my 40s, I looked it up, and that's the actual name of a demon. So, um, but that actual demon, and as time went on, I got so frustrated with it. I, um, in one dream, I was crying, and I reached out my hands. And these sparks, purple sparks, come out of my hand, and I vaporized him and his whole following. And what? Uh, yeah, and um, it was so brutal. And uh, what had happened was, I didn't tell you the end of that dream. Um, when that happened, I was crying. I was leaning on a rock, and my arms were wrapped around. Uh, someone's ankles okay so if you can envision that someone was standing on a boulder and my arms are wrapped around their ankles and I looked up and it was Jesus <laughs> and you he looked down tell me that. no I didn't tell you that because I, that's just the end of that dream so that was I couldn't believe it it was so real and I looked down he just looked and smiled at me and then that dream that it kind of went away like it it was almost like a, you know, like a defeating, I don't know, thing. I don't know what, why, why that happened like that. Um, but that was one. Another time, after a few years, the same demon come back, and uh, at that one ended up. I, he was chasing me up a ladder, and I tore him limb from limb with my bare hands in the dream. And I think what it is, is it was my own self coming to terms with things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I yeah. And when I was, I told you about when I was 12, I started to get really bitter and, uh, and, um, you know, like I was really, really atheistic. Like, I mean, just an atheist through and through to where I, you know, I thought, you know, like, Maybe the maybe the devil's better than God and all this stuff and just bitter and mad, right? And then I had another dream where this uh, guy showed up, a very genteel sort of man, bald guy, and he named himself and he said, "Do you know who I am?" And I said, "No, I don't." And I was crying again in the dream. He said, "I've been with you since you know, and my name's Aridim." And I said, no way. And he said, yes, I was there for you when you needed. This hasn't been about, I don't know what the exact words were, but the, the premise of it was when you needed to change, you were given what you needed to change. And I couldn't believe it. Like it just, it, that changed me as a person. It really did. It, uh, it just, I never forgot it, you know. And like I said, I never thought, you know, I never gave it that much credibility other than that it changed me. But when I looked up the name, it freaked me out because, you know, that name was never familiar to me. And I looked it up and it's a, it's a demon of nothingness, of hopelessness. But if you look it up in the Catholic, there's a, a list of demons. Right. You know, and it, it presented itself as something um, pretty, pretty bad. Um, like, it, it just, and on another part of that incident, too, that, uh, um, and I know this sounds like, you know, well, he's making it up as he goes along, but there's so much to it that no. Well, those um, are not simple experiences. No, I was in my bedroom. This is around a little while after that happened when I got sick. And I, you know, you know, when the older houses, you know, the top, 
the top story, the, the ceiling will slope to kind of conform. Mm -hmm. Well, I looked up and there was a gray face appeared on, on the slope of the ceiling. And when I saw it, I knew it was, a, it just, a, it was really, really a nasty, nasty, horrible face. And it just, to me, symbolized all the, everything that's crappy in the world, that right. kind of a, feeling. you know, just, this is not good. Kind of, this is, I don't, wouldn't say it was evil. I just thought hopelessness and, and just anger and everything was in this face. And then all of a sudden I heard a scream and it was like it was inside my head. And then I, it freaked me out. So I ran inside and I looked down the street and a bunch of people were gathered on this porch. It was my friend's porch. And so I went, put my shoes on, went down the street and his mother was out on the porch and, uh, they, they were kind of consoling her and, uh, and I said, what's going on? She goes, well, Mrs. Her name was Hussar. They were Hungarian. Um, she said she saw the devil. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that was right around that same time. That was all like, there was really a lot of kind of, you know, I just think that I, when I look back on it, you know, again, we, maybe it had something to do with the seance, like maybe something did come through, but in the end it made me, it actually benefited me. I hate to say, because I mean, she was terrified. Right. And at times I was too, I was pretty scared, but it did benefit me in the end and, and it identified itself as something for me. So that's what blew me away. No doubt. That's a um, little freaky. Yeah. And and when I was 20, I had an out-of-body experience. How was that? Well, what happened there was um, I was living in Toronto in the, the first house. I guess I, yeah, I was I about 20. Um, I fell asleep, and uh, I went into this dream, you know, like a lucid dream once again. And I dreamt I was on a hilltop, and I was looking down at a road, and the road was windy like a highway. And I'm looking down and I could see a white van and it had a few people in it, but from a distance, right? And I saw this mist in the middle of the road. And I thought, gee, that van's going right into that mist. But the mist turned into that face. Remember I told you the face that I saw? This great big gray, yeah, really. Yeah, the gray one. Yeah, it turned into that. And when the van hit that, where the face was, it was such a loud, almost like somebody put a, a firecracker in your ear and made a loud crack, right? And this is, I'm still sleeping, mind you, okay? And when that crack happened, I felt very, very light. And all of a sudden, I was looking at myself with my, because I sleep on my tummy, with my arms out. And I looked at myself, and I was just inches above myself. And then... Here's where it gets kind of crazy. I started floating up, and I thought, what is going on here? And I thought, what an amazing feeling, okay? this, And this is a craziness because it, it people think it's weird, but it was almost orgasmic, the feeling, okay? That is kind you of weird. Float. I'm going to stop yep. you. I'm going to yep. stop you because we're going to take this last break, and yep. I feel like... We're going to need our focus on this. So we will be right back, y'all. Y'all come back. You're listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Come on, I'm Southern, but, um, nope, that'll do, hello, 
I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. This is Jason Bland, host of Midwest Paranormal Presents Paranormal Soup, where we stream live as a webcast every Sunday night, 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern, with guests who will blow your mind. Live ghost box sessions where you can call into the show to see if the spirits will talk to you. And the World Wide Web of Weird, with the latest in paranormal news and evidence. We're bringing the weird every Sunday night, 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern, on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow and subscribe. You are listening to WBHM, digital broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live, live, live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 45 minutes after the hour. And we're back for our final segment here on Fate Mag Radio with my guest, Carl Anderson. And Carl, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. But, oh, that's um, all. You know, when go ahead and tell us your conclusion. I'm so sorry. Well, I'll, I'll get right to the point of that one. Basically, well, I, I floated up towards what I, you know, like the ceiling. And I actually got a vision of the ceiling becoming very opaque. Um, and I got the feeling that they could fly away if I wanted to. But I thought, and this is crazy, but I thought, I'm going to look around the room, and I'm going to see, because this is so real, that I want to prove it. And I had a barrel full of uh, different fishing rods, and I remembered where the, what their configuration was, and I remembered where things were on my little nightstand. And uh, I just thought, I, I'm worried if I go. And then all of a sudden, I woke up. Right. And then the way I turned the lights on and everything and uh, everything was where I saw it from above. So that told me something right there. You know, there's. That's fairly. I can see that. Mm. Because you wouldn't have really been attentive to those details when you went to bed. Right. Yeah. Well, actually I, when, when I saw that was when I was actually experiencing and I just looked right. around and experience that, you know, like, and that's what I mean. It was so, I thought it's like, uh, you know, someone goes and gets abducted. Well, grab a tool from their shelf or something, right? You know, they say that, but you know, it's a different, it's probably a whole different reality, but I knew that I saw, I knew what happened to me happened, you know? Um, so that was kind of different. Well, we have two questions relevant to this. Um, April wants to know, did you ever get rid of this from harassing your dreams? Um, I don't think, I think it's a state of mind you choose. If you choose to feed into something that's really negative. Um, and it, think bad things happen in life. doesn't mean you walk around, oh, it's got to make positive, right? But if you feed into negativity and, 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 dark feelings or that's when these things start to happen. And it's almost like to wake you up. I, I really believe that. And I don't think it ever really left. It's always with you. It's just waiting there, you know, and it's for you. I really believe a lot of it's for you. I think that, I think that you're right. I think sometimes people are more welcoming to those experiences than others. And mm -hmm. I think that the reason for that is because it's a way for you to grow. Like exactly. Sherry wanted to know if you had any psychic or empath abilities. And I don't know. What um, do you think? Um, I had, ex and I, I've had a, a few little incidents. I was telling you Kat about mm -hmm. the, uh, I had a, you know, a dog chew toy was sitting on a CD stand and I was watching TV 
And I looked over at it, and I just, I don't know, I just thought, well, kind of like, what if, kind of a thing, thought. And it flew off the stand and landed on right at my feet. But I can't, it's so random that, you know, it, 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 it's not the way I'll look at this and I'm going to make it move. Right. It's something random that happens. And I think it's just something telling you, you know, there's more to life and what you think life is than what you the when than what you see. I would agree you know, with that. It's a little bait to just keep you there and keep you growing, to keep you asking questions, to keep you, you know, appreciative too of what you have as as you know, and uh to not feel, you know, to, to, to kinda of look around the world and look at other people, see how they're coping with things and uh you know you so you might find that you may not have it as bad as others and that, I know that sounds cliche but it's something that just it's there I really believe that a lot of it is there for you so positive thoughts you know like and uh take the time to look at people and listen to people and I think you if there is something that's bothering you that's haunt, seems to be haunting you'll see when you, you it'll subside when you start to learn that lesson because I will I think agree with that. Yeah, you need because to learn. it's there while you need it. Exactly. And either you evolve to the next thing, or things get right back to normal. Yeah, and there's not really a, in between, right? Exactly. You. Yeah. It's uh, you're on. I believe you're on a soul journey, and you maybe. I don't know about reincarnation, but I really believe their soul is. It's got to live the experiences. It's got to live the darkness. It's got to live the. It's got to live the light. It's got to realize the light. It's got to see, you know. And that's the only way you learn is not just by being told. You have to live it, and sometimes it's not easy. Well, you know, I am, I am always one for believing that everything happens, good, bad, or indifferent, the way that it's supposed to. Because mm. everything that happens is a learning experience. And as an adolescent, I actually went through some relatively exciting times. And I would have preferred not to. But you just never know. You know everybody has to, to develop. And as an adult, I was able to take those and kind of know the kind of person I did not want to be. So it mm -hmm. aided me in sticking with being who I did want to be. Much better. Exactly. <laughs> Much better. And if you, could, if you could look back or even or looking looking back on it now, you if you were to ask yourself, well, I would rather, you know, I'm sure you would rather not have gone through some experiences, but given the person that you are now, were the lessons worth it? I'll ask you that. Um, some were. Yeah. Some I could have done without, regardless of the outcome. Mm. So, you know, but again, you just try to acknowledge that everything happens the way it's supposed to. There was a lesson in there somewhere, and it might not have been mine. Mm -hmm. So I do believe that the what is truly us inside doesn't die. I believe that we're energy beings and oh, yeah. that, you know, energy doesn't dissipate. It no. doesn't die. So I just think that life is interesting and I, I kind of just hang on through the ride <laughs> and yeah. just try to do the best I can. I find it interesting because you and I are pretty close to the exact same age. And yeah. it's, it's interesting that our communication, I feel like, you know, the fact that we do communicate was out of all the people in the discussions that we have, I think that it's because we're very similar in a lot of ways. More than so, likely. Yeah. So, you know, I, I appreciate you sharing April says thanks for sharing those things because they're not easy you're very welcome. yeah you're yeah. very well you know it's again it's a lesson and uh 
I appreciate the questions. It's, you know, it's, I have a whole bunch of myself. <laughs> <laughs> but you're seeking, right? That's yeah. what we do. You know, we seek. And that's what makes it great, isn't it? That's, that's, it's the learning. It's the yes. learning and, and realizing that, man, you know, and you'd, you'd think that, you know, you go through 50, 60 years of living that, well, you know, it's going to get more and more figured out. No, it's it's the opposite. It's There's like, so oh, many oh. more questions now, right? Yeah, and uh, now you, I realize now that there is, it's a it's a big universe. It's a, you know, it's a, and it's all. I believe it's all connected. I We're connected agree. to it. You know, and you know, I agree, like you. I believe that everything paranormal is related. I believe that that UFO UAP is connected. Well, certainly alien beings are connected to paranormal entities and cryptid energies, and you know the list goes on. So I just I'm excited when I see research and discussion on these topics because it means that. To me, it means that we're coming together. Exactly. And it's so important to do that. It's it the is. only way we're going to get answers. Exactly. And it's, it's, it's a big, it is a big question, quest, and, uh, you know, people have to keep asking, you know, with the present things that are going on and with UFOs even, you know, like TTSA and that, don't, don't buy everything that they're selling either, you know, ask the questions there, like, because well, we don't really yes. know and don't feel bad about questioning. Don't no. You don't have to be insulting. No one should be insulting. Put the questions to them. Absolutely. Like, you know, like you, you, you have that right to ask the questions and you have the right to be suspicious too, you know? Um, and, because there are so many, everybody except Do Tom DeLong is retired government. Hey, yes, absolutely. High level retired government. Yes. We're talking. Absolutely serious clearances and you know I mean Lou ran the the HF you know the there's alien phenomenon out there get out and find it you yeah know, that was his job yeah so you and figure then, the clearances that are involved in that well Christopher you know, yeah no. clear, I mean every single one of them every one is is a high level government was a high level government official. Mm -hmm. It would be not unlikely to consider that they may still be. They could be. You know, um, so you I just guess. have to kind yeah. of take it. I mean, I'm not saying they are, I'm just saying that that possibility exists. And there's a lot of people that don't trust because of that. Yeah. I and, personally, yeah. yeah, I want to believe. I, yeah. I do believe, and like I said, I feel like we already live in a post-disclosure world, so. Oh, yeah. I got, <laughs> I had the chance to put that on a friend's um, Twitter feed who asked if we, what, what we would look like in a post-disclosure world, and I said, well, look around you. You're there. <laughs> exactly. <That's laughs> you know? It was great. I loved it. That's awesome, yeah. Because she is a serious ufologist, and it was just fun. <laughs> yeah, just look around you. And you know what? It's crazy because, you know, like um, you, you show people, like they'll show them the New York Times headline, Pentagon admits UFOs are real. Oh, and look at that. Like there's a, did you see that ad for butter there, you know? There it is. Just <laughs> nobody. I don't get that, right? It's, it's exciting. The, it's a big deal. Oh, it's huge. Enjoy it's it. A, change humanity and then they're looking at what kanye said right uh, yeah it's just yep 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 <laughs> you know i i swear to goodness i there are so many people that i feel like are you know public relations plants right but we are just gonna have to wrap this up i can't believe our time is already up and you well, thought that it was going to be forever <laughs> well yeah, I, thought, I was uh you actually thought no man how the heck are you gonna fill that up I could go on, as you probably hear right now, and, you know, on and on and on, and there's so much more that, 
you know, about these things that, that I, you know, could say, but, um, but there's just not enough time. There's not. We'll have to do this again. Absolutely. We'll just keep bouncing back and forth between shows until we run out of conversation. (laughs) I'm good with that. Get that guy off of there. (laughs) That's all. I got a, I got big shoulders. That's a good deal. (laughs) can't be in this this thing without without taking some Truth. uh hits and criticism and that's fine you know just keep an open mind that's it that's right but not so open that your brain falls out no and... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. that being said thank you so much to our listeners you know y'all are the whole reason that we do these things and i appreciate every single one of you and yeah carl i've had such a great time this has been just fantastic. I am so glad you came, and I'm looking forward to doing this again. But... Thank you very much, and uh, Kat, for having me on. And uh, thanks, you know, to all the listeners uh, out there. And uh, thanks for hearing what I had to say. And uh, again, keep asking the questions. And I, I just appreciate you having me on. I really do. Well, to a T, we're getting you know great show. Thank you, great show. Yes, thank you. So they loved you. And awesome. I know, right? So I'm going to say, because we're out, got to be out, but be the change. If you don't like what you're seeing, change it. Manifest it. Put your energy into what you want to see. You know, you don't have to be buying into the violence. You don't have to be buying into the anger at the violence. You don't have to be distracted by you know the man behind the curtain. All you have to do is just be the best you that you can be. Be the best spouse, the best friend, the best you, and make those changes. You rock. Rock your world. You've got it. Good night. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live, live, live out of Birmingham, Alabama.